Hello and welcome. Today we're here to talk about migrating Google Workspace into Microsoft 365. So I'm going to show you how we might do that. I've got some live tenants we're using, which will be from obviously a, a Google Workspace tenant with some Gmail there and some Drive content. We're going to migrate that across to a Microsoft 365 into the Exchange Online and also into OneDrive. Now that's for a a real domain which is the planium.com if you've seen any of the other videos before that about setting up that e5 demo uh, domain you'll you'll know that domain from that this is what i would consider a real world migration this is an active uh, tenant on both sides so um, i'm going to use the native tools for this uh, only because it's uh, a, a simple way to do things uh, the migration tools as you would know really do an awesome job when it comes to uh, a certain level of complexity in the migrations. This one is a quite a simple one. We're just doing a like for like migration. We can use the native tools for that. But if you start getting into a lot more complexity, definitely recommend you look at some of these migration tools that are out there today. Uh, and indeed, plenty of videos I've got online as well um, show you how to use those things. Um, but this one, as I say, is a fairly simple one. We're doing a big bang approach for this, uh, uh, this particular company, this planium.com, this fictitious company. And uh, along the way, you'll notice that um, there'll be some things pop up on screen, uh, really showing that it is a real world migration. Any errors and things that come up, I'm not gonna edit those out. Uh, anything that we need to do, any little typos that I make, anything like that, uh, I'm just gonna leave in. Now, so you can see what really happens in these migrations and how they really do take effect. And also some of the errors that do pop up, um, I'll go back in and show you how to fix them in case you come across those same things yourself. So yeah, let's just jump in and get started. So for the first part of the migration, I just want to show you around what we've currently got set up. So you can see we've got a Google Admin site here with a few people. As I mentioned earlier, this is only a small tenant. We've only got uh, four people to move. But the theory is, is that what we do for four people could easily be 400, 4,000, who knows. Uh, essentially, this is what we've got to migrate. So you can see there, all valid email accounts. And if I flick over just quickly into the email for him. You can see he does have email. Um, what I did when I set up this demo was I just um, subscribed him nicely to loads of newsletters and reports and things. I, I just wanted to have something to migrate. So so this is this is what this looks like. And in the uh, my drive, just so we can migrate some stuff, I just check a whole lot of music files on there. Um, so you can see why you would do that. Now coming back here, you can see that he's now got five gigs worth of content and a few emails as well. So that's a good start. We've got a working Google environment, a Google workspace tenant that we want to migrate across to 365. Now let's just flick over to the M365 side. You can see in the users, we, we don't have anybody yet. We've only got our admin set up. If I look over here in settings, what I have done, and you'll notice in one of the last videos, if you follow that, uh, we added the planium.com in there. That is only set up currently as like a placeholder domain in there uh, to accept obviously accounts and things. It doesn't accept any mail or anything obviously because the MX records are still pointing at the Google side. So we'll come to that later on in the demo. But what we want to do here is we want to take an extract of all these people, put them into a, a spreadsheet, not really used for this, and then use that to create all the accounts on the M365 side. So we've got something to marry up and we can then start the migration process. And in that as well, we'll also set up their OneDrives and we'll get them licensed as well, nice and quickly too. So to do that, best way is just on this admin screen here, we can just hit download users. I only want those columns that are available. I did add in earlier, obviously, the drive usage and things, which is good to have. We're going to drop that into a CSV and just download that. That happens uh, pretty quickly. So we'll just wait for that for a second there. There we go, download the CSV. And that will appear shortly too. There we go. And what do we want to save it? See that downloads is fine, and we'll just open that up. What we want to do with this file is obviously expand it out a bit. We can see these are it's a good resource to have as an export all the names of the people we want to create. So what I'm just going to do is I will just um, get rid of that guy. We only want to have these four. Now we're going to use PowerShell on the 365 side to do this work. But what I also want to show you is I've got a little text file here, which is quite handy. If you haven't got these things stored and just run just the once in your PowerShell sessions, good idea to have these. I'm going to put these into the uh, 
into the blog on the website on macvalgeezer.com just so you can download this as a file. But essentially what we need to do here is we need to open up PowerShell window with administration rights, administrator rights, should I say, and we'll use that. So first thing is we'll grab all of this. We're not going to use obviously everything like Teams and what have you in this demo, but it's certainly happy. Uh, a good thing to have. Machine will be happy having those on there. And we just run those and that will just go through and install those PowerShell modules so at least we have them. So what we're going to do though is I'm going to come back to the um, template here. And in the spreadsheet, these are the commands. Now what I do, and you'll see why I do this, once I cut and paste that in there, is it's a little formula that will then build you the PowerShell commands necessary to make these users in 365. So if I take that, and drop it in there. Obviously, we're looking at making sure we've got UMSOL user display name will be what's in A2 and A, so A2 and B2, which is his full name, then first name, last name, user principal, which will be the email address, uh, a usage location, and a license assignment. And you can see I've got them in there. So once you put that in, you'll notice if I run across to the right here, we have a nice PowerShell command ready to create that user. Now you might ask, where did I get this from here? The TCG E5 demo developer pack. That is the license we want to apply to the user. So let me show you where you can get that from. That is uh, an MS account, MSOL accounts view. So we need to jump back to the PowerShell. And first thing we need to do now, we've run all these commands. We've got the command that's available to us. We need to connect. So we'll connect this MSOL service. And that will give us the prompt there, you can see, for the, for the tenant. And we just put that in. So, and the password. There, it's going to ask me for the MFA prompt, which I will just do now. There we go. And we are now connected. So I can do the get MSOL account SKU. And you'll see that'll show us what licenses and what that should be. So we would just take that out there, cut and paste that into the formula, obviously, and, and voila, we get this effect here. But you can see what it's done is it's, it's quite easily created us all these commands to use. So I'm just going to uh, Excel, and you can see I've now got these, which I would then grab, copy those out, and drop those into. Yeah, I might just start a new one and drop them in. So by running those commands on the tenant now, um, it'll go ahead and create those four users for us. So let's just run that now and see what that does. Now notice we didn't put anything about passwords in there. So you can see that as it creates them quite quickly, it's going to assign what these passwords will be. I recommend you might then want to just go and uh, change those passwords um, to whatever you, whatever you feel like, obviously, and um, carry on. You can specify the password in the spreadsheet if you wanted to and just by putting a dash password and then put it in, but it has to be done as a secure string. Um, you can look that up and see how to do it. Um, I won't bother, bother you with that one now, but um, uh, yeah, essentially we have these accounts created. Let's just run back to our right here. Let's do that, and we should see by doing a refresh on the active users here. There we go, there's our users, and they are licensed. And really, they are set to go. What we do find, though, is if we jump into car there, we want to do a migration of the OneDrive. This is normally triggered by the, the first time that you would go into OneDrive. It lights it up, and away you go. That's no good for a migration, because you can't migrate anything unless the user has obviously triggered that. So we can trigger it with PowerShell. In fact, if I go to OneDrive here, you'll say it's, it's not set up for the user yet. Um, so that's OK. I'm going to show you how to do that nice and quickly. So what we do, we just close that out and we'll jump back into the spreadsheet. And uh, firstly though, we'll grab the command out of here. Now this is the command we want to use. We'll just copy that out. And I'm gonna copy that into the section and you can see that it's, it's created that little command for us. And if I just take that and paste that down the rest of them, you can see what we've done here. I copy that now into the PowerShell to run. Just take that new one. There you go, that's going to do the job of provisioning those sites. Now you'll notice that it's the SPO module, which does require the SharePoint. We do have to connect to SharePoint, which is a little bit different than the others. 
let me show you how you can do that. So what you have to specify when you do the connect-spo service, you have to specify the URL to connect to, which is actually, you're going to put the whole thing in there. And it's going to be the tenant-admin sharepoint.com. And it should go in. It'll ask us. It's, it knows we're logged in from the last one, which is handy. And there we go. We're now connected to SharePoint. Now we can check that. We just do a quick get SPO site. Any SharePoint sites that you have will be displayed there. That's how you can obviously verify the connection very quickly. What we'll do is we'll just go up here and run this whole look. Just pop us back to a line there. Now it doesn't tell us it's done anything good, bad, or otherwise, but obviously we are connected in and it has done that. If these are valid uh, UPNs, it will go ahead and provision that OneDrive for us. Now, if I go back to the console and have a look again at Carl and look at his OneDrive, see it's not yet. We'll just uh, hit refresh a couple of times and, and come back in a second. It can take, I've uh, seen it take up to five, 10 minutes to produce a, a response there, but normally it's pretty quick. So we'll just come back in a second and check that out. I wanted to keep the video with the refresh so you can see it changing from the, un, uh, the unset up OneDrive into this and the dog barks in the background. But you know what? Hey, this is a real world thing. We just keep, we just keep them in there. Uh, but you can see now uh, it has provisioned the OneDrive and it's ready to, ready to go. Now, I must apologize for something there. I uh, just looked that up about the password and you can set the password in plain text. So just want to show you just quickly, I've just deleted the account for Russell and I'm just going to run back to the PowerShell. So then put in here from Mr. Russell there, just put dash password and assigned one. So you could put the same password for everybody or you could obviously have that feeding out of the spreadsheet in another column. Obviously you can do that with the formula too, but um, let me just grab this one here and just run just that line and you'll see that it does create him and assigns that particular password. So it is actually obviously very easy to set set uh, passwords. Leave it blank, it'll set a random one for you and just tell you what it is afterwards. There you go. So with that, we're ready to move on to the next video, which is um, prepping everything for the actual migration. Now we've got everything set up and everything is ready. And there we are, yep, Russell's back. Uh, we do have, actually, you know what? I need to go and turn his OneDrive on, so I remember to do that. But uh, we're ready to go to the next one. So thanks for watching this one. Um, once again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I will talk to you real soon.